that did it, but today we will go, we are going to embed this quantum teleportation algorithm into another algorithm called entanglement swapping. So let's take a look again what we did last time about this uh, quantum teleportation. Hmm, some problem with the display. Okay, so do you remember we have three qubits? All our goal is All our goal is to teleport a qubit from Alex to Bob, right? Last time when I drew it, I put Alex on top because I put the M uh, LSB on uh, the the um, the MSB on top. But this time I put the L MSB at the bottom, right? Because I'm following the IBM convention, and this is the IBM Q uh, circuit that we have the MSB at the bottom and LSB on the top, remember, right? So, and you can see from here, it's Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. So when we write it, it will be something like this, right? Start with C, A, B, B, and then B for a cat state that uh, of the whole system. How many qubits do we have here? Four, yeah. Just four, qubit zero, one, two, three. And the first one on the left mode MSB is Q3, belongs to, to a new person we have introduced. But last time was Alex and Bob. All we try to do is to uh, send the um, qubit information of Alex all the way to Bob, right? And then we say that is difficult because we need a control knob gate, which is large enough to entangle the Alex and Bob's qubit. Remember that? And that's why we introduced an ancillary qubit or auxiliary qubit BB, which at the beginning was with Bob. And then Bob did some entanglement. I hope now you, when you see Hadama gate plus a control knob gate, you know this is an entanglement. And after that, he physically here, from here to here, if you remember, he physically sends the qubit to Alex, right? And then this is in Alex's lab again. So she can do entanglement with this qubit. And the reason of doing this is what? Because we are going to do a measurement, Alex is going to do a measurement on this auxiliary qubit BB. And then if she get one, she's going to call Bob. This is something I failed to emphasize last time. This is a uh, and other extra classical communication. She's going to call Bob and say, Bob, please apply a knock gate to your qubit. If she gets zero, she's not going to, uh, she will call Bob also say, I got it, but it's zero, do nothing. That's why we have this con classical conditional knock gate. If this value here we measure in the classical register is equals to two, one zero, then we are going to uh, apply a knock gate to Bob. And why it is one zero? Because when she did the measurement, she stored this in the first classical qubit. We count from, count from zero, okay? We have C3, C2, C1, C0. And here she stored the answer in C1. So as a result, if she gets zero, this reading will become 0010, which is two in decimal. That's why if it is two, Bob is going to apply a control, a, a not gate to his qubit. And through this stage, we finish the step one A and B, that you entangle the qubit between Alex and Bob. If I remember correctly, right, I don't have this in my cheat sheet, but at this stage, they share the information of alpha, zero zero plus beta one one uh, we ignore the bb ignore the c that is what we have at this stage right we're doing so many things entanglement in bob's lab sent the auxiliary qubit to alex lab alex did an entanglement call bob for classical channel to whether to apply or not gate and then all we have done here is just to entangle uh, Alex and Bob's qubit in this way. 
And if you forgot at the beginning, other state is alpha zero plus beta one. That is what Alice had in the big at the beginning. Okay? And then after that, what does Alice do? She try to measure in the plus minus basis. How do you measure in the plus minus basis? You can apply a hard gate so that you just measure in the zero and one basis. It's just equivalent to measure in the plus minus basis, right? And then if she get two again, right? Here, uh, I mean, not two, he store this at two. If she get uh, plus, then she is going to uh, call Bob again, then Bob is going to apply the phase shift gate, right? Now, we have two conditions. Either when it is four or either when it is six, what does it mean? It means either the value is zero, one, zero, zero, or zero, one, one, zero. Both of these indicate that, remember, this is C2, right? Because she stored the measurement here into the second classical qubit, 0, 1, 2, right? So this is C2. If she get 1, we want to apply the phase shift gate, the Z gate to Bob's qubit. But however, it is possible that before either this C1 is 1 or 0, really depends on what she measure here. So there are two possible situations, right? That's why you need to apply the Z gate when it is 0, 1, 0, 0, or when it is 0, 1, 1, 0. Because you really don't know what she measure at the first time, right? And so when you call Bob, this is the second classical communication. Right, so last time I forgot to emphasize the first classical communication. So you need to call Bob one time, and before that you need to transmit the particle physically one time, call Bob one time, call Bob another time. So you need two classical communication in order to fulfill this quantum teleportation. Right, this is a review of this quantum teleportation from Alice to Bob. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, say again, default. Uh huh. Yeah. Here is still lead to endian, correct? Yeah. That is the convention in IBM's machine. Yeah. So, again, what is uh, lead to endian? It means when you write it down from left to right, the last, the right one, the ending one is the least significant bit. Least significant bit. So, lead to. That's why I call it lead to endian. In some computer archite architecture, they actually write it in this way. This is big endian because the most significant bit is at the end on the right hand side, right? We have someone from computer engineering. Am I right about this? Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, is this okay? This is a review. But then on top of this, we want to do something called entanglement swapping. Now remember I told you that was quantum teleportation. You can think of if I were able to put a particle I had in Mars, I will be able to teleport myself to Mars by transferring my, the wave function states of my particle to that in Mars. Then in some sense, I teleported to Mars, right? Then there's another question then. So is my wife still my wife after I quantum teleported, right? So if you treat the uh, marriage as entanglement, then here it shows that, yes, you can do the same thing. That's how I understand this philosophically, right? So we assume at the beginning, Alex and Carlos, they are entangled, they are qubit, right? So here we, again, Hadama gate followed by control knob gate, it always gives you entanglement. This is what we have at this stage. And I did not spell out the state of B, B, and B, because they just factorized out to the right hand side as the least significant QB. This is entangled QB, right? 0, 0, 1, 1. So now Alex and Carlos entangle with each other. Now, but then I just like, maybe this is my wife, we got married. And now I quantum teleport myself to Mars, to Bob, right? 
through this circuit, after this quantum teleportation, I will be able to entangle C and B. Okay, so it just say that if I quantum teleport myself to Mars, my wife is still my wife, right? So, so I did not show you how to prove it, but you can just copy this circuit to IBM Q, and then here is entanglement. I go through quantum teleportation. At the end, I do the measurement on Bob and also Carlos, right? I save Bob's qubit to zero, Carlos to three. And for the second, and the, the first and the second QB, QB1, QB2, these are not what I'm interested in because BB is auxiliary qubit. Uh, once we've done quantum teleportation, we dump it. And then Alex, I already quantum teleported myself in the Earth. It's just a bunch of atom with a wave function collapsed to whatever I measure. It's no longer me, right? So if I just look at this one, I only measure the Bob and the Alice, you see that? You will find that now they are entangled. It was C and A got entangled, but now it becomes C and B got entangled. Now, if you look at the measurement, when you say entangled, what does it mean? If C is at zero state, B has to be at zero also, okay? If uh, C is at one state, B has to be at one state also, right? So when I do the measurement for four qubit, how, well, how many basis state do, do I have? If you forgot, just come from one qubit. One qubit, how many? Two qubit, how many? Then four qubits, how many? One qubit, how many basis state? Two. What are they? What are they? Zero and one, right? How about two qubit? And they are zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. Then how about four qubits? How many basis they? I, I jump, I jump to eight, I jump to four. Yeah, I skip three. So it's how many? 16, right? To the power four. I only have eight here. Why? Because other states are not entangled states. I cannot measure them. Now you look at this clearly. First and the last one means the hollows. C and Bob, these two qubits, the most significant bits and the least significant bits, they always the same. Zero, 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 one, 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 one. You definitely have other value, for example, zero, 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 one. It does not appear here because these two are entangled. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about this slide, right? A review on quantum teleportation and then just embed it in this extra circuit where we have A and C entangled. After quantum teleportation, not just that, I teleport the states of Alice to Bob, that's I teleport myself to Mars, but also the qubit that was entangled with me now entangled with Bob. So this is very useful. How do you entangle with a qubit that is far, far away. Now you don't need to have a super big knock gate. You can just go through this quantum teleportation. You can entangle with it, right? As long as in the transfer process, you don't damage everything, anything, right? And on analogy is now my wife is married to the me on Mars, okay? Okay, any questions? Then let's go to another quantum algorithm. This is the simplest one and we will go into detail and uh, I hope you can appreciate the uh, quantum parallelism from here. Although many things are still very shaky, we don't know how to implement and we don't know the overhead, but this one can help us to appreciate something very important. This is called Deutsch problem. Uh, it has a more generalized one called George Deutsch problem, but we only study the simplest one. So this is the question. I have a Boolean function. If you don't know what is Boolean, I think you know. Boolean basically is just one and zero algebra, right? So binary, right? It's a Boolean function. So when we say it is a Boolean function, then definitely is talking about I have a function with input one or zero and its output is one or zero. Very simple. 
one or zero, output is one or zero, right? Now you don't know this function. This function can be very complicated. It may take you 100 years to evaluate, which makes sense, right? There are many of such things, right? So, however, it's very simple. We only have four possible cases. No matter what function you have, we only have four possible cases. One is that if your input is zero, it gives you zero. When your input is one, is one, it also gives you zero. Okay? This is called a constant function. It means no matter what input you have, it is constant. You can also have the input equal to zero, but output equal to zero, but when input equal to one, the output equals to one. You can say this is not constant, but we use a general name, which is balance, because this is necessary when you go to more qubit, like the more general algorithm, the George, George Deutsch algorithm, right? You can Wikipedia. If you can understand what I'm telling you here, you will be able to understand the other algorithm. This is called balance because half of them are one, half of them are zero, the output. Half, are output, half will give you out zero, half will give you one, right? Now, you can also have input equal to zero, but output is one. Input is one, output is zero. This again is balance. And the last case is no matter what the input is, it gives you output one. This is constant. If you know logics, like electrical engineering, this is one bit. You easily can see that, hey, this is nothing but just connecting the wire to the ground, right? You, you have an input, but you just ignore it. Always output zero. This one is just like, you just connect the wire to input and then output is the input. Right? Zero give you zero, one give you one. This is just what? Input equal one, output zero, input zero, output equal one. What type of circuit? Not gate. This is the most complicated one. And this one is just you connect it to VDD, always give you one. Right? But then the point is that you don't know what function it is, and it can be a very complicated function. Okay? For example, if you pay Russian roulette, for example, right? Uh, you can say I model all the atom and molecule. You calculate everything, right? Just based on how the people, how how have how how the angle of his hand. Maybe you can calculate where the bullet is, for example, right? And maybe eventually it just tell you whether he maybe this is one turn or two turn. You know whether he's going to shoot something or not shoot something, right? Uh, that is a life-saving game, right? If you have this supercomputer in your brain, right? Then you can choose whether to play or not play. Something like this, right? Okay, classically, if I want to ask you if a function is a constant or a balance, how many times do you, do you need to calculate this function? I mean, how do you find out whether it's zero or one? You, you, don't, you are not allowed to open the box. It's a black box. Then how can you test it? Who is? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you'll find that what he's saying looks like, oh, even kindergartners can say that, right? But that is the logic the computer scientists have been used to develop all their algorithms to prove their algorithm. It's so simple as this. Yeah. So, so you will put in zero to see what you get, put in one to see what you get, and of course then you know, right? So you need two computation. You need to compute f of zero and f of one. So two computation. Okay, but if you use quantum computing, you only need one computation. Okay, and that is the nice thing about this one. Now, if you have even more qubit, you need two to the power n computation, right, for the general problem. But you still just need one qubit computation in quantum computing. But this is uh, this is the best speed up you can have with uh, quantum computing. You have a constant uh, speed 
uh, for quantum for quantum computing, but your classical program go up exponentially. Ten qubit, you need one thousand computation, right? And then thirty qubit, you need one trillion computation. But for quantum computing, you still need one. But this one I don't know it well. But the point is that you have a lot of overhead and also how to implement. But here is just to give you a, a, a appreciation of how it works. Okay. Now I'm going to. Go through very quickly how it works, and then we go to the math again, step by step, okay? So what you're going to do is something called quantum oracle. This is something very confusing. You need to get the oracle, right? So now, probably based on this thing, this thing you understand something. Oracle is like people will find something, a, a turtle, turtle, turtle's shell, and then do something, right? Uh, in ancient China, China, I don't know other place also, they will put a turtle shell in the fryer and let it crack. And then depends on how it crack, then it tell you whether you should do something or not do something. And that's not an oracle. But the oracle is like what the God tell you to do, right? But the God does not tell you exactly what happened. It's just hidden in some... Uh, these guys, uh, uh, how to say, uh, you use something to reveal what will happen. You don't exactly like, uh, like uh, you would say, uh, like those, those superstition, superstition, like, uh, what you say, uh, you go out, how do you say? Anyway, for example, for certain color, uh, you will think uh, something bad is happening, like almond, right? And then so certain color is something good is happening. But you don't tell you what good, what Thing that is good is happening, or uh, what, what bad thing is happening, right? It just uh, put in an omen. This is not oracle. Why I want to say this as an analogy? Because this is exactly what it does. What we want to learn is, what we want to know is f of x. But it doesn't tell you f of x. You will encode it in a quantum gate called quantum oracle, right? You just take it for granted it is encoder. Uh, it may come from a physical system if not then you need to come from a smart people who can create this based on the function that you don't know while you can create it effectively you don't spend trillion of years to create the oracle while your computation is one second then your quantum algorithm is still useless right but let's assume we can get it this oracle look at this is a uf of x is a quantum gate how do we define a quantum gate do you remember the sentence I keep repeating. How do you define not gate or uh, yeah? Very good. How it transform the the state, the basis state. We define it by how it transform the basis state. This is the basis state. It defined by saying that okay, you are going to give me an uh, x input and y input. Now, let's make this simple, just one qubit for now, okay? It doesn't need to be one qubit. So the most significant bit is x, the least significant bit is y, okay? And this forms the basis state. So it means this can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? And what is the output? The output is that the most significant bit doesn't change. But the least significant bit becomes y exclusive or f of x. You don't know what is f of x, but the f of x is embedded in this quantum oracle. Do you see that? It's just that I don't know what good thing is go going to happen tonight, but I just see a bird flying around. I feel so happy. That's like the almond, the oracle. It's embedded the thing that is going to happen, right? For superstition point of view. Make sense? And that is how you calculate the qubit. We'll talk about exclusive or, right? Uh, we can go to more detail, but this f of x gives you either zero or one, but you still don't know what is f of x. So this is the quantum oracle. How does this speed up? you probably can guess already, create a superposition state. So in this case, for this particular algorithm, you could create this superposition state. Why we do that? Just because the storage is smart enough 
to find out that if he creates or she having or she create this in a superposition state, you can help to solve the problem very fast. Okay, so you just take it for granted. Now we're just still at the stage of understanding the algorithm, not try to create an algorithm. So we create a superposition state by this, which is equivalent to the plus and minus product of the plus and minus state. Is that okay? And probably you don't need to, probably you already know why, because we want to do computation at the same time, right? Then what do we do? Again, don't be scared of this. This is just, I want to give a general introduction. Then we apply the quantum oracle to the superposition state. Again, the quantum oracle is not f of x because this is not classical computing. But we embedded the information of the quantum oracle uh, of the f of the function in the quantum oracle already. So when I apply this quantum oracle to the superposition states, the first thing, it applies to each of them simultaneously. That's the main point, parallel computation. Secondly, its effect is signified by the fact that it has something exclusive f of zero, something exclusive f of one, right? So although it does not tell you what is f of zero, f of one, but basically you base on this, you, if you do it right, you can come up with some information about f of zero and f of one. It's just like, of course, it might, be, might not be correct. You don't know if your friend is rich or not, right? By seeing that he's driving a Porsche or a Tesla, I don't know what model, and even don't care when it crash into the tree, then you guess he or she is rich already. Because you really don't know how much money he or she have, right? And that is like this. And if you, or another analogy is like, let's say you like a girl, right? Instead of saying, do you like me? You actually do something else to gauge it. For example, hey, uh, do you want to go ha to have a lunch with me, right? And then uh, suddenly appear on the road, uh, uh, see if she will smile or she gets scared. Like, <laughs> now become a, a little bit like, uh, what do you call? How do you call that? <laughs> Don't do something illegal. But uh, the point is, uh, you try to sense some response which you think contain the information you want to know. So here I try, my goal is not to know what is f of zero and f of one. My goal is to know whether it's balanced or constant. That is very important. If I find out that it's constant, I still don't know whether it's this one or this one. If I find it is balanced, I still don't know whether it's this one or this one. So if you do it right, then you do a measurement, you will find that the most significant bit will always be plus if it is constant. If that function is a, a balanced function, you always measure zero, okay? That is the idea. But now let's go to the math. As I said in this class, we want to go to very deep step by step, right? And I already show you the overview. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Now, the goal is to measure at a different basis, just like what we did for quantum teleportation, right? But uh, but we will do a hard gate to make it into zero and one, and then only measure zero and one. Because in a quantum computer, very often you, it's more convenient to only measure at one basis. You don't want to keep rotating your magnets, for example. Yeah. No, but, but why this is important, the point is that if you can see that this is effectively measured in the plus minus basis, then it helps you to create the algorithm, right? Uh, because I will guess Deutsch will start with this and then he, 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 he or she found that, okay, uh, plus will be the best. I mean, I want to measure in the plus, although I cannot, I just do a hard market. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the in, uh, details, right? a lot of math, but, but you need to go through. Okay, so first we implement, it's just a re repetition of what we just said, right? Implement 
a quantum gate, right? Which is called, which is a unitary gate. UF or uh, which is a quantum oracle, right? Where UF, which you already seen that already, X, Y equals to X, and then Y exclusive or F of X. That is the first step, right? So uh, let me draw this again. If this is UF, and then let's say now I put the top as MSB, right? If you implement in IBM Q, it will be swapped. And then I have top and bottom. I call this X, Y. When I can uh, factorize them, then of course X is on the top, Y is at the bottom. But because this can be a superposition state uh, uh, in general, so I just write it in this way, then your output will be X on the top and then uh, Y exclusive or F of X. Is this clear? Right? And why do we do this? Just because the smart people came up with this. We just learned it for now. Is this okay? Okay. This is the first thing, right? And it's correspond to what we discussed so far. Then the second thing we need to do is prepare a superposition state. So how do we prepare? We just prepare psi equals to plus times minus, right? We need to prepare it. How do we prepare it in circuit is another thing, right? We don't think about circuit. We just purely think about the algorithm at this point. So this is equal to one over square root two, zero plus one times one over square root two, zero minus one. And again, the so-called times is tensor product. I omit the tensor product sign, right? And what is this? It's just one over two, and then you just do multiplication, like what you did in at elementary school, right? Zero, zero plus zero uh, what is zero one thank you should be minus zero one plus one zero minus one one is this okay any questions right so this is just the math, but you need to be able to understand. If not, please let me know, okay? Then we will go to the first step. We said we will apply the, unitar the unitary gates, the quantum oracle to our superposition function, uh, wave function, okay? So let's try that. It means it's UF applied to one over two, zero, zero, plus zero one plus, uh, not plus, right? Minus zero one plus one zero minus one one. Can you follow? I just do the substitution, put the side here. And then I follow the distribution law, right? We, when we learned the Hilbert space, uh, we already learned that, but of course, more importantly, we know that we can just take this for granted because this is the rule. So no worry if you don't know that, treat this as something you have been cheating. And it's just like the matrix multiplication. I can multiply the matrix into the vectors, right? one by one. Any questions? Now, the, these are all simple, right? And now what, what important is that how you apply? So although I put into two slides, but it's not difficult, right? 
again equals to what is the first term half okay so nothing special half I still keep it the first one is say is uf applied to zero zero what is x what is y now we just want to follow this equation uf applied to zero zero I hope that you feel comfortable that's this is equivalent to x y right I can put them together because x what really it is is x tensor product y and I can always write it as x y because I know that this means tensor product and I can also write it as this as long as I understand this means the two qubit system are you okay with this what I'm writing if not comfortable let me know I explain to you right electron one electron two tensor product I can just write it as electron one electron two right because you know I'm doing quantum computing and then why don't I just put everything in the cap it's the same right that we have mentioned a few times so when you apply to it what happened the first one doesn't change the second one changed to this right so let me just write it clearly it was uf to zero zero okay so it becomes zero because the first one is x don't change the second second one is y exclusive f of x y is zero exclusive or f of x but x is zero that's I have in the first term C can you any questions does it make sense let me write it down u f of x y equals to x times uh, x and then y exclusive of f of x that was the definition of our quantum oracle right our definition so no need to argue definition x is zero y is zero that's why this is zero y is zero f of x f of zero I still don't know why it's f of zero right so I do the same thing for the rest I have what zero one but negative zero one I just follow the rule okay zero then zero x is zero and then one y is one right and then f of what zero because x is zero that is for the zero one term now see if you know this how about this one plus you have one zero one zero then it means x is one y is zero so what should I write for the first term x is one one and then zero exclusive or f of one very good right because zero uh, x is one right and similarly I apply to the last term because everything is one so it must be one one exclusive or f of one okay so that is what we get when we apply this to that right so okay can you take a look why it becomes one over two very good question right one of them is one over square root two and you also can check because I've had four terms each of them is one over two so it's square is one over four four times one over four is one so it's long molars right so that's why because I apply to a unitary gate it will keep being normalized if your input is normalized uh, what is exclusive or let's look at this uh, this is important I want you to memorize zero 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 exclusive of zero equal to zero one exclusive Yeah. Zero exclusive one equals to one. 
one exclusive zero equals to one, one exclusive one equal to zero. Try to look at this. How to do it? Let's look at this one. I want you to pay attention to the relationship of these two columns. If the first one or one of them is zero, it's just like that doing nothing to another gate. It's just like if you have an identity gate, if the first one is zero. If the first one is one, it's just like you apply the not gate to another bit. So you should have this set, this a sense that if you exclusive with zero, you stay the same. If you exclusive with one, you get the negation becomes the not. Okay. So because of this, I can further write this one as one over two, zero, f of zero. Do you see why? Because as I said, zero exclusive with someone is always itself, right? Whether you give me zero or one, it's still you, right? So that's why I just need to put f of zero. And I do the same thing for the next one because it is one exclusive of someone. So this is equal to f of zero, but take the not. I put the bar to indicate it's the not value of f of zero. Okay. And similarly, I have one zero exclusive. Uh, no, I don't need to. It's zero exclusive or so this is just f of one. And then the last one is one f of one but negation make sense now from here actually we should have some insights also eventually i can prove to you that how it works but let's have some insights from here right if it's a constant function What does it mean? It means f of zero equal to f of one. Make sense? If it is constant. Then it means this guy becomes one over two, zero. I keep f of zero minus zero. Well, f zero bar, of course, not equal to f of zero. So I keep it. But then, what is f of 1? If f of 1 equal to f0, I can write this as f of 0, right? Because it's constant. f0 equal to f of 1. And similarly, f of 1 bar equals to f of 0 bar. Just because f of 1 equal to f of 0. Because it's a constant function. Now, let's try to see if we can do something. I try to group the f of 0 together. I have this term. Look at this. 0 plus 1. They all have f of 0 as the least significant qubit, right? So I can do it as this way. Do you agree? And similarly, for the other one, I can have zero plus one. I put negative outside. Right here, I take this term negative zero times F zero bar one times F zero bar. So I can factorize zero bar F zero bar out, right? So I have a zero plus zero, correct? And both of them has zero plus one as the most significant bit. So this is equal to what? This is just equal to a plus times f of zero minus a plus times f of zero bar, right? Because I can put one over two as one over square root two, then here I get plus this one over I say something wrong, right? I still need to keep one over square root two outside. 
Sorry, right? So I only take one over square root two into here. Then I get one over square root two zero plus one, one over square root two zero plus one. Then I have both zero, right? And what does this give me? I further factorize it. I have plus at the beginning. So this is plus times f of zero minus f of zero, the whole thing. A little bit confusing. How many qubit do we have here? There's a test. How many qubit? Still two, right? Which one is the most significant qubit? The plus. And the least significant qubit is this one, which I don't know what it is, can be a superposition. Uh, they, they, I mean, F0 must be different from F0 bar, right? If you're zero, then I'm one. If you're one, I'm zero. So this is a superposition state of the second qubit. But what is the main point? If your function is constant, I regardless what value you have for f of zero, when I measure the first qubit, it must be plus. That is the main point. Okay? Then I ask you to go home, try. Maybe I don't need, uh, yeah, try. Uh, balance case and then you will see minus at the most silicon qubit I want you to try in this thing in this way okay but I'm going to give you the answer as a messy result right so let's go back to here continue from here I have this line this is the general one we don't know whether it's constant or balance yet so what I'm going to do is Continue the derivation. I'm going to apply H tensor product I to it because here I already kind of got the answer. I play with the uh, plus and minus basis, right? But in the whole algorithm, I need to convert it to zero and one because I can only measure zero and one, right? So I continue the derivation. But here already, you got the answer already. You know that if you measure plus, you will get plus. So I'm going to apply harder gate to it. So what will happen if I apply the harder gate? Uh, let me just do it once, uh, spell it out, I get 1 over square root 2, I apply Hadamard gate and the identity gate. Hadamard gate is applied to the most significant qubit, right? So I just copy what we had from the last line. 0, f of 0, and then minus 0, f of 0 bar, and then plus 1 f of 1 and then minus 1 f of 1 bar right this is just here here i just write this is equation one for uh maybe that will confuse you let me call this equation one right so what i'm doing is just apply this to equation one that's it right zero f zero 0, F0, zero, negative 0, F0 zero bar, 0, negative F0, 1, 1, and then 1, 1, F0 bar. Right? I just copy this one and apply to it. Now, when I apply this to this, you should be very familiar with this already. What happened to the least significant qubit? The second qubit on the right. Stay the same. Because I apply an identity gate. So all I need to do is just to apply harder market to it, right? So when you apply harder market to zero, do you remember what you get? Thank you. One over square root, zero plus one, right? And then you continue to have. This, and then I continue to apply to the zero. I, again, I get one over square root two, zero plus one, and then that is the second term. And then apply to the third one, I get, what, what is that? Do you remember? 
0 minus 1. Very good. And then eventually apply to the last one, 1 over square root 2, 0 minus 1, f of 1. My sense? Any questions? And then this is a uh, very messy. Okay, you just group the terms. What I'm going to do because I already know the result, I know that, right? Uh, of course, after you grouping, you will find that. I'm going to group the zero terms together for the most significant bit. So based on this, this is equals to one over two, one over square root two. And then I'm going to group a term that is zero, right? Which one give me zero? First, I have f of zero. I have negative f of zero bar. Then I have f of one and then negative f of one, right? I just group all the terms. So let me just copy it. f of zero minus f of zero, the whole thing bar plus f of 1 minus the whole thing f of 1 bar. Is this okay? What I'm doing is this. 0 times f of 0, right? Then I have this one. 0 times f of 0 bar. I have this one, right? This is zero, difficult to see. Yeah? And then I have zero times f of one. I have zero, but negative times f of one bar. I just do this. I would, I'm going to do the same thing for the one term plus one. this maybe let me okay yeah changing color will be better how about this one can you tell me what is the first term with one which which is the least significant cubic with one f of zero thank you and then the next one three is the same right it should be the same, except the coefficient will be different. F of 1, right? Because now I have a negative 1 here. So it gives me negative. And then here I have negative 1 times negative. It gives me positive. And that is why this has a, can do the interference successfully. Right? If constant if the function is constant it means f of zero equal to f of one f of zero bar equal to f of one bar okay then what happened f zero equal to f of one f zero bar equal to f one bar what happened to this term becomes zero you don't have states right so let me call this how do you call it? second and let me call this first then second equal to zero okay then can only have zero for MSB. Because this term is gone, this zero. Zero is not zero state, you just know the no vector, right? Then whenever you measure, you always get zero if you have a constant function. Similarly, if it is balanced, then what does it mean? You think f of zero equal to bar of f1 because they are different then the negation will be equal right 
f of 1 equal to bar of f of 0, then let's look at this. f0 equals to bar of f1. f1 equal to bar of f of 0. Again, the first term got cancelled. But not for the second term. You can plug in, you will see that, right? Then, first term equal to 0 can only has can after can should be half right one four m s b right so basically what i just told you is what i just done is that i go through this math actually it's messy we don't need to come to here but i just want to go through go through the whole algorithm from the beginning to the end if you measure the first qubit you got zero, then you know the function must be constant. If you measure the second qubit, you got one, then you know it must be balanced. But earlier, we already told you that this is just math, but earlier I showed you that if you consider in the plus minor basis, you already see this here. And the reason you get this is due to uh, uh, constructive and destructive interference. Here, they got cancelled is what? Destructive interference. And that's why at the very beginning I say quantum computing here from this algorithm, you see three important things. Creating superposition and then applying quantum oracle to do quantum parallelism, right? Because each of these quantum gates need to calculate f of x. It does f of x and f of zero at the same time. And finally, how you get the answer? You extract it by using the constructive and destructive interference and do you get everything you want yes you know whether it's balanced or uh constant right but you don't know what is f of x yet you still don't know just like your friend's case you know he's rich but you don't know how much money he has but if your goal is just to know that he is rich you are done Right, so in some sense, I some maybe I'm wrong, but because uh, I'm not good enough. But some sense, I feel quantum computing does not is not really something. Uh, suddenly, give you a very powerful tool, you get something for free. And it's like conservation of effort and information. You you just give provide you another route to get the information, but you don't get every everything still right. So it's not right. It's just like conservation of energy. You have the lever. You help you to lift up the stone easily if you have enough ratio. But total energy that you need to put in is still the same, right? Something like that. I don't know if you agree, yeah? So this is the summary, right? Again, you have the quantum gate. You prepare the initial uh, superposition state. You apply the quantum gate to help achieve quantum parallelism. And then you prepare to measurement by applying the Hadamard gate. If you were able to measure a plus minus state, you don't need this step. You add this because I want to measure in the Z state, okay? Because of time, I won't give you time to draw it, but we, I already drew it earlier, right? So let's just look at uh, this one. But, but, but maybe let's... Uh, Let's spend a few minutes. I draw it. You don't need to draw it. It's good as a, a pedagogy. You see how I draw it. Maybe it helps. Right. So let's go back to here. I basically summarize here. First of all, you want to prepare the uh, initial state, right? The superposition. Again, first you have the most significant bit. You have the least significant bit. Maybe the top is X. Right, the bottom is y, but they start with zero, zero. Okay, so now I want to form the plus minus states. What do I do? Uh, say again, Hadamard, yes. So for the top, I want to have plus, so I just add the Hadamard gate. With this, I get plus, right? How do I get minus then? Oh, and then Hadamard, very good. So he said, do the not, then I will get one. And then after that, I do Hadamard, then I will get, zero, get negative. So at this stage, 
I prepare the superposition, right? All right, so what I'm doing here is just to implement this one, prepare this into plus tensor product minus. After again, it's easy. I put this directly into my quantum oracle, which what it does is uf, again, we define by the basis states equal to x, uh, y, exclusive or f of x. Okay, this is the quantum oracle. After this, I cannot measure yet. I, if I can measure in plus minus basis, I'm done, but I cannot, right? And I say I need to apply a hard armor gate so that I can convert it to the right state. And then I'm going to do a measurement and store it, okay? And if I get zero, then it is constant. If I get one, then it is balance. Okay, how about this qubit? I don't care. Okay, because that is not what I want. Yep, so I think that's it. Any questions? Very simple algorithm. For this algorithm, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, I said I have George Deutsch algorithm, right? That's a general one. Try to Google uh, Wikipedia. They have a very clear explanation. But now you can follow this, you can follow their derivation. You only want, yes, this algorithm has a, I don't know, not even super exponential speed up because it's just constant, yeah, okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is the, this is nothing but just uh, make sure that when you implement in IBM Q, where is the MSB, right? The top, I put the MSC at the bottom here, MSB on the top. Let's pay attention to this. Uh, so this is a simulation. Uh, here is the quantum oracle and it is one one. And that is just one of the case. So in your assignment three, you need to implement all the four possible uh, cases. And you can, now the point is you don't have quantum oracle. The point is you, uh, how to say, you don't have the real function, right? So here you, we just try to emulate. Here we are implementing the constant function. This is oracle. And then why this oracle is so simple? I'm implementing zero equals to zero and f of one equal to zero. I'm implement this type of function. And why then if you apply u to, because it is zero, right? X, y is going to give you x, y exclusive f of x, correct? Then because y is always zero, right? That here it means y equal to, oh no, so f of x is always equal to zero, right? So this one is always equal to x, y exclusive with zero. Uh, so which is just x, y, right? Then it means that it's just an identity gate. So this is a special case, this one, equivalent to a quantum oracle that implemented this type of function, right? But it's useless to you because you're the one who implement the quantum oracle. It means you already is, know it's constant. This is just for you uh, as an exercise to emulate, right? But when you need to apply to the real problem, I actually don't know how to do it. How do you get an oracle, right? So this one, you need to read the paper or whatever, okay? And because this is a constant function of this, 
Then when I measure, I expect to get zero, right? Constant. But in a real quantum computer, you sometimes you get one. But why I have zero, zero, and one, zero instead of one and zero? Any idea? I mean, why it is not just zero, but zero, zero, and one, zero? Because they are two qubit. Oh, I just measure two qubit. Very trivial question, but but yeah, I, you should know. Right? Okay, lastly, let's talk about quantum oracle. We already talked about that already, right? A little bit, but let's go into a little bit deeper. A quantum oracle is nothing but a black box. This is very important, right? If you already know exactly what it is inside, how what is f of x, then you what is the point of doing the computation? So it is a black box which, as I said, contains f of x, but it doesn't give you f of x. It just contains the f of x related to the problem you want to solve. So now it's not just Deutsch algorithm. You can be other algorithm. Any problem you want to solve, info, including the searching algorithm, uh, we will discuss on Wednesday. Right? So in, include a problem you want to solve. Okay, like what I talked about the turtle shell, right? So of course it is a gate, right? It is a gate. Anything has to be a gate and it must be reversible, right? Anything on your quantum computing circuit except the measurement needs to be reversible. So it needs to be a gate, right? So some of you may already ask why we need x here you see x come out as x why don't we just have u of y equal to f of x why can't we have something like this or basically if i have the oracle i apply a x let me call it y maybe more related uh let me call it x anyway x i might have m qubit here saying that I have m qubit. I hope that why it doesn't just give me f of x. Isn't that great? But the problem is, if you have 100 qubit as input, your output might not be 100 qubit. Now in this problem, your output is 1 qubit. Constant or not con oh, No, no, no. Sorry, I cannot say that. Uh, but uh, in some cases, the input doesn't e equal to output, right? Yeah. For example, if you have x, which is uh, against 0 and 1, but you have n qubit, this means you have the permutation of them, right? And then your f of x equals to zero and one but you have m cubes oh i swapped the sign m qubit why i cannot have this can you tell me why say again uh why i cannot have uh cannot have n not equal to m my input has m qubit Right? Can I have a con uh, oracle, which is a gate, that the input is m qubit, output is n qubit? Is it possible? Why? Why not? Right. Is that mismatch in Hilbert space or it's not reversible, right? You cannot go back, right? And if it's not reversible, it's not unitary. Okay, right? So you can come up with many methods and one of the methods is the so-called exclusive or oracle, which is what we just learned. The exclusive or oracle is this. You have a auxiliary qubit, I'm not auxiliary. I, I have auxiliary qubit y, and then your output is x, 
and then tensor, uh, then a tensor product with f of x exclusive y. And that's why it's called exclusive oracle because we have an exclusive operation here. Okay, now I am going to tell prove it, prove to you that it is reversible. Okay, if I apply uf to x and y. Uh, maybe I already show you, no need to write again, right? I applied uf to x and y, I get this, right? What if I apply uf one more time? Do you see that? Apply uf two times, right? Which means I'm applying uf to x, f of x, exclusive. Oh. Exclusive y. Do you see what I'm doing? If I apply uf one time, I get x f of x exclusive of y. If I apply two times, it's like I apply one time to f x f of x exclusive of y. Is this okay? Any questions? Now, can you try to calculate what is this? Now. The first one is still x, the second one is something, right? We can treat it as y. The whole idea of quantum oracle is that you keep the most significant qubit. And then for the second one, you keep it, you do keep it. But then you need to further exclusive or with f of x. By definition, right? So the first one, keep it. Second one, you exclusive with f of x. Is this, you just treat this whole thing, this whole thing as something. So I take this whole thing and exclusive with f of x by definition. But what is exclusive for? If you exclusive the thing itself, zero, zero, zero exclusive of zero is what? Zero. One exclusive with one is what? Zero. If you do exclu exclusive or together two times for the same thing, uh, the same thing, you get zero, right? So this is just equal to x zero exclusive with or with y. I think uh, the label confused you. I'm sorry, right? The y should not have this one here should not have this one here because the whole thing uh, sorry for that the whole thing is a uh, lumber so what i'm trying to say is that if you apply it two times it becomes itself again for this quantum oracle right then it means that uf, uf equals to identity. Because you apply two times, it equal to yourself. Then it means this gate is just equal to identity. Then it means what? It means uf equals to uf inverse. So it has inverse. This solved the problem that this proved that if you construct a quantum oracle in this way, the quantum oracle is reversible. And you can look at the textbook, it's also unitary. And that's why this is a good quantum gate. And that's why usually people use quantum oracle, okay? Next class, we will talk about another quantum oracle, which is phase quantum oracle. Okay. Any question regarding this? If not, we can stop here. Yeah, this is confusing. Take a look and ask me if you have questions. But today I...